Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. We're still talking about how the graphics thermo works in Dreams for PS4. Let's get to it. This video is going to be all about looseness and how that affects graphics thermo. In order to approach this subject, I want to set up a baseline by which we can measure what we end up doing. If you go into sculpture mode, by default your shape will be a cube and it will be a default looseness. I'm working in stamp mode here. If you have it set to smear by default, it will look a little different in terms of the menu, but the results will be the same. Our default stamped cube is 2x2x2, two by two by two, and at the default looseness, the thermal cost is 1%. In the last video, we talked about thermo reporting granularity, and for the sake of clarity, I'm going to copy this a bunch of times and get myself a decimal value for the cost of this sculpture as it stands. Our result is 6% for 10 unique copies, so our baseline cost for a standard 2x2x2 two by two by two cube at standard looseness is 0.6%. For sake of comparison, I will do the same thing with looseness in the stamp tool turned all the way down. If you missed it the first time around or are unaware, you can edit each tool in sculpture mode. You enter the shape editor for each tool by holding L1 and pressing square. You have lots of options in this mode depending on the tools, but we'll concentrate on looseness in this video. I've turned looseness all the way down and stamped the shape. The result is a 2x2x2 two by two by two cube with a graphics cost of 10%. Let's give that some granularity so we can better compare it to our default. The result is 9.2%, so the cost is about 15 times greater. It's important to note that this is not the maximum cost of this shape in either case. Unless I'm missing something, you can't come out of sculpture mode with maximum cost. You can only get there by using the sculpture detail tool under tools in the main edit menu. The maximum graphics cost of a cube is 24%. This is a 24% cube here and I've made it max cost because I want the greatest contrast possible while using the looseness tool in sculpture mode. From previous examples, we've seen that looseness affects the graphics cost of a sculpt uniformly when we stamp it or lay it down with smear, but what if we change the looseness only on some parts of the surface? I like to use the cone shape as a brush, and I'm turning surface snap on to keep my brush glued to the surface. Now if we go into the shape editor with L1 and square, we have some different options compared to stamp. Like stamp, we have a looseness option, but when we change it, we see that it only affects the looseness inside the brush. I'm going to turn looseness all the way up and brush a bunch of it all over the sides of this cube, leaving the edges clean. And the result is a reduction in thermal cost from 24% to 11%. The important lesson here is that not only does looseness in sculpture mode affect graphics thermo cost, but also that your application of looseness does not need to be uniform. The looseness tool is great because you can use it artistically and if you're turning looseness up, you actually benefit from a thermo standpoint. One fantastic setting in the sculpture mode shape editor is varying looseness. Varying looseness will give you that brushed on looseness for sides while leaving edge lines mostly intact. You also retain the ability to adjust looseness uniformly once this effect is applied. I do it with a cube here and don't show other shapes, but it's important to note that this will be used with greatest effect with edge shapes. You don't get any benefit from this setting on a sphere for instance. If we look at the thermo, we get 1% graphics cost compared to 10% for looseness all the way down on a sculpture that doesn't use this setting. After you've used this, you can still adjust the surface with the looseness tool, and it's important to note that this effect is per shape in sculpture mode, so it's not like you can only use it with the first shape you put down. You can use this with any shape you add or subtract from a sculpture. Here I'm messing around with reducing looseness with the looseness tool just to show that you can do that as well and of course as a result your sculpture becomes more expensive. This increased graphics cost from 1% to 7%. So one great thing about varying looseness is the retention of crisper edges at lower cost and I'll bring in another cube with sculpture detail all the way up to illustrate that. The edges aren't equivalent, but if we lower detail on the 24% sculpt a few notches, the flex sizes on the edges are the same. 
What we end up finding out is that use of varying looseness with looseness all the way down gives us the same edges as a 10% sculpt with 10 times less cost. Some of the ideas presented in this video play a vital role in reducing thermal cost while retaining shape or allowing artistic freedom, but I think this next bit is the most revolutionary concept to the entire idea. Sculpture menu options do not make sculpts unique and therefore have no graphics thermal cost. If you didn't quite get that or have no idea what I just said, hang on to your seat. I have six varying looseness cubes here. I'm making them all unique in sculpture mode and showing you that by doing this, their collective graphics cost goes from 1% to 5%. However, there is a way to make each of these look unique without impacting the thermal's opinion. That is through each individual sculpture's menu. Since we've been working with looseness, I'm going into each sculpture menu and I will change the looseness slider enough to make each of these distinct from the others. If we did this in sculpture mode, each would have a separate cost and their collective cost would be greater than 1%. However, since the menu sliders do not affect thermo, the cost of these is still 1%. We could make 10,000 different ones this way and the cost would still be 1% graphics thermo. The truly amazing part is that this is true for any slider in the sculpture menu, not just the looseness slider. To prove it, I'm going to change a whole bunch of things and make these really look different. And as you will see in just a moment, the thermo cost is still 1%. The takeaway from this is that sculpt props are not your ultimate limit in a scene from a graphics thermo standpoint because you can change each of those props into something else with some cunning. Now that I've shown you all that, I want to show you just how useful varying looseness can be from an artistic perspective. Also from the perspective of trying to make a sculpture multi-purpose so you pay for it once, but use it for more than one thing, or to add to scene variety by getting more than one look out of the same sculpture for the same general purpose. So here I have a varying looseness cube and I'm turning impasto all the way up in the sculpture menu. That makes the emissive as prominent as possible for a given looseness level. Because looseness is varying, this will give you a very different result from a standard sculpt because now you're dealing with all sorts of differently sized flex. And you can change the look of the surface from this point in many ways like experimenting with ruffle. You can get some really useful looks this way by experimenting with various sliders. When you combine this with some lighting, you get some nice texturing without a lot of effort. You've probably seen these types of effects by artists like Disarmed and didn't realize it. How the emissive responds to looseness depends on the fleck type, and you'll see that in the outro here as I cycle through the various fleck types with this sculpt. So we've talked all about looseness, how that affects thermo, and the wonderful ways that you can use looseness in sculpture mode to achieve the look and cost you're aiming for. Like any game engine, you must be aware of what dreams can and cannot do. Avoid trying to make it do what it doesn't do well. Take advantage of what it does do well. One thing it does very well is allowing you to make one thing look like lots of different things. And we talked about that with the sculpture menu sliders. Still at least one more video to go on the graphics thermal topic. We still need to talk about shape and color. I also want to talk about the new thermal reporting features. They're pretty new to me as well, so I'm looking forward to getting better acquainted. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.